Hello, fun. My name is Nick, and I'm here at the Rock River Officer Competition in Rockford, Illinois, with Team 461 Westside Boiler Invasion. They've had an incredibly successful season, serving as the winning Alliance captain at the Finn Mishawaka events and ranking one both of their district championship and in their whole district. They have an incredibly unique intake and elevator system, and a whole bunch of cool code that ties all of this together to make this robot the powerful machine it is. Plenty more about this coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted at Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video. Now we're going over to Jasper to talk about their elevator and intake system. So with our intake, we have a full length intake from end to end, which means we can intake a note from anywhere that the robot drives over, meaning we don't have to center it or anything like this. And we decide to go with the under the bumper intake for this season because an over the bumper intake is a lot more dangerous and it can break easier while an under the bumper intake is protected by the bumper and is less likely to be damaged. So now we'll show you a little bit how So as you can see, we can intake it from any part of the robot from side to side. Right. Now the next part of our robot is our elevator, which is actually a two-stage elevator with a continuous belt. So how this works is there's a motor at the bottom that moves the belt, and when the belt gets pulled up, then this carriage gets pulled up first. And then the second stage gets pulled up. So how we are able to do this is we have two uh, two springs, 10 pound springs down here that keep the second stage all the way down. So always the first stage to come up is this carriage right here. And this, will, and this whole elevator setup allows us to amp really well. In about like one or two seconds, we can do the whole thing go up, drop the note, and then come all the way down. Yeah, absolutely. It's very cool. Is there any way in your design process you ended up landing on this design? So I guess we were, we last year we also had a similar elevator and we decided that it worked pretty well last year. So we're going to do something similar this year because we do have to go up and down. So the elevator design worked well for us. So we just went with this and we, we had to rebuild this whole structure many times because this square has to have really, really low tolerance to be able to work properly. And if something is just a little bit misaligned, the whole thing won't work. Absolutely, yeah. All right, now we're going over to Anish to talk about their code. All right, so our first thing, as you could have seen when we picked up the note, when, when we put it in, it immediately stops right in this position every time. And that's because of this, these beam brakes we have right here. So what we do is when we pull it in, we wait until it hits this beam brake, and then we, we basically just pull the note back into this position so that we have it in a consistent spot every single time. And then from there, we have two choices, either to shoot or to amp. For amping, we make it really easy for our operator because they just hold the button, it goes up, and then when they let go, it spits out and goes all the way back down. So it's really easy. And then on the other side for shooting, a lot of teams use like a lookup table to figure out what angle the shooter should be at. But where we're unique is we use our limelight right here to figure out the distance from our robot to the speaker. And then obviously we know the height of the hole of the speaker. So we use trig in real time to figure out where this uh, shooter should be angled at to make the shots. And that has really helped us in our auto because the shooter can be constantly adjusting. And even if we're not on the perfect path, we can still make the notes. So speaking of auto, our most successful auto has been our six piece auto, where we start in the middle of the subwoofer and we pick up, we shoot our preload, we pick up the three notes that are right in front of the speaker. And then we go back and get two on the, the amp side in the, on the middle line. And 
what, what we do in this auto is that instead of following a set trajectory for our robots turning, we are constantly adjusting the turn to align to the speaker, again, with our limelight and April tag, so that even if we hit something, it'll still turn back and be able to make our shots. Absolutely. Uh, was there any particular moment that kind of led you to some of these solutions? Like, for example, the um, using those lookup tables instead of, or using the uh, vision instead of the lookup tables in that way? So at the first event, uh, so actually, before we even started, we knew that a lookup table could be dangerous because it, different conditions could make um, the April tags move slightly and then we might mess up our shots. So we wanted to always be able to make those shots. So we decided on this system of using trig because we knew that it would always be accurate. And then for our auto, to constantly align. At our first event, we realized that our robot went off course a lot and was missing our shots. So then we decided to have our shooter and our robot constantly aligning to the speaker so that we could make those shots in auto. It's very cool. Well, Westside Boiler Invasion, thank you so much for your time. You've had an incredible season. You're doing well at this event so far. I wish you the best going on. And again, thank you so much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.